Hello and welcome. This looks a bit ominous, doesn't it? Uh, but it's not. Uh, as you can see, it's an HP 5036A microprocessor lab. So this video uh, will just cover, you know, basic uh, introduction to this unit and uh, basic operations, really. Now, the case in itself is quite interesting. I just love the older HP gear. And, you know, this really just tickles my fancy this here. It's extremely good quality, you know, as you'd expect from HP of this era. Just the first thing to note, you know, the case, even this little suitcase here is uh, very good quality. You know, very sturdy. It's got these lockable latches here. I've got the little key for it here. Micro P Lab. It's a very small P Lab. So we unlock here. Oh, by the way, superintendent of the CAD in Kilburnie, uh, that's Wellington, New Zealand. We unlock the case latches here. There we go. Uh, that's all well and good, but if we have a close look at this label here, note the exclusive right side up feature. Now we're right side up here, but if we if we turn the briefcase upside down, even though the latches are unlocked there, they're locked. Little safety feature there, so you don't open it upside down. Turn it back up, and we unlock here. This this is playing up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Just like that. And here we have the microprocessor lab. The lid actually comes off. I'll show you that in a second how all this comes goes together. Okay, we've got a protective foam pad here. Use this foam to provide added protection when transporting. And there we have it, the processor lab itself with a power cord here. Now the reason I'm looking into having a wee play with this is just that I've been experimenting with uh, getting a, an IBM 5160 motherboard, or two of them actually, up and running. They're both dead. I've got to the point where, you know, I'm testing the CPU, I've got good clock signal, uh, you know, the reset's not being held or anything like that, there's no problems there, and it's uh, getting to the point where I'm starting to have to troubleshoot address buffers and you know decode signals and things like that and I really just want to use this as a learning tool and the reason for that is because it's got a very similar CPU to the uh, 5160 which has an 8080 CPU this has an 8085 CPU quite similar in the way that the addressing and the data is you know presented to the bus using multiplexing on the a low end of the address bus is uh, multiplexed with the data bus. So that's really what I want to get my head around and I'm hoping that this can help uh, me do that. Yeah, so just trying to improve my troubleshooting skills really. This is the Practical Microprocessors book that comes with the unit. It's a very substantial uh, book here and as always with uh, HP documentation it's extremely well uh, written, extremely in-depth. Uh, there we go, there's a little a diagram here on the data bus and the address bus there. That's a generalization, that's not specific to this uh, unit, the 8085. Uh, but yeah, it's going through, you know, some logic, number systems. It might pay. I mean, if you're not too sure about number systems, likes of binary and decimal, you know, well, you know decimal probably, but, you know, binary and octal, things like that. Uh, there's probably plenty of good information on the internet uh, relating to that. Uh, but that goes through how to convert, you know, what decimal and binary is and how to convert between them. Uh, octal hexadecimal things like that you know yeah so you know really nice manual I'll be using this manual as part of the learning process uh, there's some uh, practical procedures 
and uh, whatnot. So I'm going to, I basically just uh, jumping to this section here really. Yeah, pretty much to this section here. You know, they've just got a, a really basic loop program here and uh, that's assembly language, machine code here. And uh, you know, that just gives you an introduction to how to use the microprocessor unit there. So I'll be starting around about there. Yeah, so you know, I'm kind of almost doing this video really just for my benefit as well as other people who might be interested. I mean, I could use this to sort of refresh my memory later on. I sort of tend to dip in and out of different subjects. So when I come back to a subject I haven't uh, looked at for a while, it's quite nice to just have a quick video to watch that will get me up to speed fairly quickly. So that's that there. <laughs> and if we ever have trouble with our 5036A, we've got the service manual. And again, extremely, extremely well documented. Um, you know, it goes through theory of operation there. RAM, ROM, logic symbols, you know, there'll be schematics and all sorts in here. We've got, uh, yeah, diagnostics. Here we have schematics. Here we go. <laughs> Look at that. You can't get it all in shot there, but there we go. Big fold out schematic there. Extremely handy. Uh, it comes right across here. <laughs> That's the actual two pages of the book there, and then you come right across here to the schematic. Very nice. Typical HP. Here's another fold out section showing the traces on the board there. Very handy as well. There we have the board itself. Uh, now I've, I have done a, a little repair on this board. Yeah, you'll notice over here I've, I've done a little repair here. It's not that pretty. Uh, one of these LEDs failed on this little cluster of four LEDs. So this shows the address bus here lit up, you know, uh, when the appropriate bits are high or low. And, you know, one of the four little LEDs on this cluster here failed. I'm not overly happy with my repair. It was a, a little bit rushed. Uh, because the the wiring here, it's got a little resistor in here, is obstructing this uh, bank of LEDs. It makes it a little bit hard to read. So I think what I'll do is I'll uh, bring this over to the rear here, I think, or try and work out a way there that's um, a little bit uh, tidier there. But it works. Yeah, you can see some test points here. So, you know, nice and easy to probe if you need to probe them. That's part of the course actually, is using an oscilloscope to probe some of these signals. Yeah, pretty neat little unit. And there's the CPU there, 8085. And nice and clearly labelled there. We've got the address buffers up above it there. And we've got a ROM there. And some RAM. And we've got our decoding control. So yeah, nicely, very nicely laid out. It's easy to get to uh, switches for switching in and out there. Our little display here with our uh, four digit address and register display. And then we've got our data over here. Quite similar in many ways to the microprofessor lab that I've got. It's based on a Z80 CPU or Z80 uh, Zilog. Um, but this has just a bit more to it with a lot more um, easy to read sections to it, you know, fairly clear uh, data bus lines there, it's all well labelled. Uh, so just a little bit more polished I think than the microprofessor. You can actually flip it over here and there's the back side of the unit there. So nice and easy to get to. Uh, power supply underneath here. Now I was going to show you the how this works here. This latches in. This is the, the lid the case there. Just 
like that there and then you can use that as a, a prop there so that you know you've got a better angle you don't have to sort of stoop over the unit yeah there's there's supposed to be a strap here i could probably sort something out actually because it's just a standard dome type system here to here uh, with a like a leather strap that goes between the two or a vinyl strap uh, that might be something that i can organize uh, but you know it's sits sits up like that so i think that's actually going to hold there it could be quite handy for the filming of this to have it uh, propped up like this okay so the first experiment that i'm going to show you here is 4-2 uh, here and if we have a look at the actual program here in the table 4-1 uh, you can see the starting address of the program that is the uh, address that uh, that's the start of RAM uh, so that's hex by the way so 0800 the contents of that location is going to be 00, zero which is a no op instruction no operation so it's a fairly uh, straightforward sort of program this one as you can see and uh, so the next memory location is C3 and that is a jump to beginning so it's going to jump uh, to the address listed below the C3 instruction and it's uh, laid out with the least significant address byte first and then the most significant address byte second so 0800 jump to 0800 so basically just a continuous loop as you can see in the uh, flow diagram here so nothing is the program <laughs> do nothing is what it does basically uh, it does a bit more than do nothing it just loops around and here's the procedure here so i'll go through and explain uh, some of the buttons as we go through rather than uh, you know go through them all in one hit and um, so we'll just learn as we go there so we turn the unit on and we're set to go there slightly flashing there but i uh, don't think that's too bad so we first of all fetch address and this is where we want to start the program so fetch address 0800 like that and it shows the current memory state there so when you first turn the unit on it uh, clears the ram with uh, just basically putting 00, zero in all the RAM. Uh, so if we uh, press store slash increment, yeah, so at the moment what it's doing basically is just going to store 00, zero just confirm store 00, zero into that address there, and then it will increment to the next address uh, space there. Carry on here, so we put in C3, that's our jump command, store that, and then we want to leave that at 00. zero. And then the next address is 08, that's the high byte, high address byte there. And we store that. And then we can decrement like that. So we go right back to the start of the program here, or we can increment like so as well. Just like that. So that way we can, you know, easily see what's in memory there, nice and easy. Okay, when we're back at the start of the program here, we can use the instruction step uh, causes the instruction shown in the display to be executed. And the display now shows the next instruction. Uh, note that although this key may appear to act like store uh, slash increment, uh, this function is very different uh, with an instruct step. You're causing the contents of the displayed memory location to be interpreted as an instruction which is executed by the microprocessor. So let's do that. If we go instruction step here, uh, it will step to the next instruction because the first instruction was no op. And now we've got the jump uh, instruction. And when I hit uh, the step again, it's going to uh, jump back to that memory address there, 0800. Basically just one great loop. You'll notice that when we're sitting here at C3 and I hit instruction step, you don't see this address being, you know, sort of uh, displayed at all. You know, it basically this instruction will 
go ahead and execute the instruction, which part of it is uh, loading this address here and jumping back to here. You can also execute the program using the hardware step, and it's quite different to the instruction step. So we're back at the start of uh, the addresses here. That's the start of RAM. Okay, and if we go hardware step, uh, the display goes blank because the hardware step key completely stops the processor after an instruction is executed. Instruction step, on the other hand, executes an instruction and then returns control to the monitor program. So look at the 16 LEDs, the address LEDs, and we should be able to, although it might be a little bit difficult to see. Okay, I've just changed the lighting here a bit because the you know, this uh, address LED is not overly easy to see. The status ones are quite bright, but the address one's not so bright there. And I'll just use my exposure there to bring that down. But you can see there, uh, so we've got these two banks of four LEDs, uh, your high address bytes, and then you've got over to the right here, you've got your low address bytes here. And you can see that if we count from the left there, We've got four LEDs that are not lit, then we have one that is, three that aren't, and then this block over here, the two blocks of four are not lit. And that translates to 0800 in binary. And that is exactly what we want to see, because that is where the processor is at the moment. We just did a hardware step, so the we're at the very first instruction. So looking at the eight LEDs labeled data, these are connected to the uh, data bus and show data 00, 00 stored at address. So we've got data 00, 0 stored at address 0800. Okay, uh, the six LEDs labeled status. These indicate whether a read or write is being performed and whether it is to RAM, ROM, uh, input port, output port. The read and RAM LEDs are on. Okay, so this left-hand one is read, okay, just in case you can't quite read that. And the right-hand lit LED there is RAM. So that's indicating that the information is being read from the RAM. Okay, so uh, now when we press hardware step again, so now you can see that the address has incremented uh, to 0801 there. So the data LEDs now show the jump op code, which is C3. Uh, so the left-hand bank of four LEDs is showing 1100, which is C in, in, in hex. Um, and on the right-hand bank here, we're showing the number three in binary there. Also note that the address is incremented but the jump is not performed. So it hasn't actually performed the jump at this point. Uh, so the, yeah, this points out a fundamental difference between the two step modes. Hardware step steps one memory location at a time, whereas instruction step steps one instruction at a time. Even if the instruction uses several uh, memory locations. With hardware step, the instruction is not executed until all the parts have been read. Uh, for example, the three byte instruction does not begin execution until the third step because it needs to read the two uh, memory locations the high and low address byte memory locations so press hardware step again if we push this twice again once we'll see the address increment to 0802 if we go again we'll see the address incremented to 0803 there Okay, and so this is showing us that we've got the, this is the high address byte, 08 here. And if we go hardware step again, it should jump back to the start of the program. And it has, you can see the address is now 0800 again. We go hardware step, we get C3, that's our jump instruction. If we go hardware step to the next address, we get 00 because that's the low address byte. The high address byte for the jump instruction is 08 and now it's got all it needs to carry out the next step which is the actual jump back to 0800 like that and that's it and now if we uh, press reset we come back to where we left off so we're at the start of the program there we can actually run the program 
and so the program so the program's now running at full speed uh, so approximately two microseconds per instruction now the LEDs they appear to show um, 0803 okay they are in fact counting from 0800 to 0803 and then going back to 0800 this is the same program sequence we stepped through earlier uh, but now the LEDs are changing so fast they always appear on so you know there's no time for them to go dim if you know what I mean the status LEDs uh, they indicate a read from RAM the same as during the hardware step mode uh, since the all the instruction really lights is the same LEDs you know the program reads only from RAM uh, so you know the fact that it's running at full speed does not cause any ambiguous display like it does up here with the address light LEDs there we press reset that halts the computer there returns us to the monitor display the display shows the instruction that it was about to be executed when you press reset it just happened to be back at the start of memory there uh, now the next little demonstration here demos is demonstrating the input and output ports so basically we read data from the input port and write data to the output port now on this here we've got input switches here so this is our input port at address 2000 and we have our output port here at output LEDs at address 3000 and noting that these the LED on is a logic zero so they are inverted to the switches so let's uh, type this program in here there's the program there just for your reference there and we want to fetch address 0900 because it starts a little bit higher in the address range there okay so first instruction is 3a and that is load the accumulator with the contents of the eight input switches here and so we need to give the this instruction an address so uh, address 2000 and with it being low byte first whoops uh, wait on three eight oh by the way the little uh, full stop here means that the microprocessor is in input mode so data input and so if we step store and increment and yes we want that to be zero and we want this one to be two zero because that's our high address byte store that and then 32 is the opcode for store it's basically store a and an address so store what's in a we've basically transferred what's at the switches here into a already so at the accumulator and the processor and this here reads back out what's in a into the output leds or whatever address you choose and this happens to be the outputs on 3000 so We'll store that, store that, three zero, store that. And then we want to jump back to the start. We've seen this instruction before, that's 3C. And then we'll give it the address of 90900. Store that. And if we fetch address 0900, we should be able to confirm that everything's in order there. Zero, that's the output address jump back okay and we can just decrement back through there for a small program like this so now if I run this we are getting all on here so effectively because our switches are all off the LEDs are reversed and it explains why the LEDs are a logic zero uh, the output LEDs indicate neg negative logic they are on for a zero and off for a one they are connected this way because the TTL gate used to drive them cannot output very much current but it can sync or input a substantial amount of current LEDs are commonly connected this way that's uh, verbatim from the manual there so while it's running we can change the switches there Oh, it's not running, is it? 
Uh, what's going on? Hang on. Okay, I can see a problem here. I've made a mistake. So when I go to run it, it basically just kicks me out. It doesn't work. There's something wrong, and I've just double checked my data there. And if we fetch address 0900 and we increment through to that should be C3, not 3C. <laughs> so C3, now it should work. Okay, fetch 09 and run. Okay, you can see the output LEDs are on there. So that matches the down switches, the off switches here. So when I uh, pop that one up, yeah, this one comes off. Just like so. Right, okay. There's a modification to the code here that you can do to flip the output, basically complement the accumulator. It causes the value in the accumulator to be complemented or inverted. So each bit becomes a zero. So that'll fix the problem with the output LEDs being opposite or inverted to the input switches there. And the uh, accumulate the code for that is 2F. Uh, so let's just, I'm just going to have a go at this and put this instruction here 2F in to see whether I get it in the right place. So if we just reset that, I'm thinking that the 2F should go in after the loading the accumulator. Uh, so reading the input port and loading the accumulator here, I think it should go into 90032 f and everything else shifts down. That's my thought on it. Get your address 0900. Okay, that's fine. So I think that we need to replace this or we'll move everything down by replacing this with a 2F here. This is the store command to store but you to store what's in A to here, so 2F should go in here, 2F, and then I'll just go ahead and write the rest of the code that we had. C3 this time. <laughs> 0 and 9. Okay, now will this work where we get exactly matching uh, input switches or LEDs to input switches here. So if we go to fetch address 0900 and we run it, yes it appears to be working. Let's see, yep. So there we have a perfect match just by the LEDs dim isn't it? Is that working the LED? Oh yeah, it is. It is working. Uh, yeah, just by complementing what's in the accumulator. Yeah, gee, those green ones are dumb. Anyway, it's working. And of course, if you reset, you know, you, you're basically this output here is latched in, and uh, any changes because the program's not running, any changes made, yeah, don't have any effect until we run the program again. Uh, can we just run it? Yeah, that's right. Yep, just like that. Okay, I've just dimmed the lights again so that we can see the LEDs a bit better here. Uh, but I'm running the program here just with the two switches switched on here. And if we reset and go back to the start of the program here, and we'll use the instruction uh, step here for this demonstration and we'll, I'll show you the hardware step a little bit later. Uh, but let's just start by executing the first instruction which is load the accumulator with what's in here. Uh, now you can see that these two LEDs are on, that's not actually reflecting uh, this actually at all, although it looks like it is, it's only because that was the last state of the uh, program when I stopped it. 
okay so you can see there if I switch that one up it's not having any effect there okay so if I um, let's just change that to the other end I'll switch the two right hand switches up here oh well, that's the first three okay there's the two right hand switches up there and if I go instruction step here it will load the accumulator with what's in the input switches here so the accumulator now has, has this in its uh, register so basically 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 in the accumulator now it's going to invert uh, what's in the accumulator but complement it okay and then we're going to output to this address here which is uh, what the 32 does and there we go we're outputting to there that green LED is on it's a little bit dim and then C3 is our return instruction back to the start okay and we're back to the start now if we go hardware step we will uh, input this instruction here I'll just switch these back again just so that we can see the difference there put the two left hand switches on there now hardware step let's go now we can see the LEDs up here it's a little probably a little bit hard for you to see here 0000, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1 which is 9 and all off on the low byte address byte here so that's 0900 and that's exactly where the start of the program is and the data is showing 3A which is exactly what we expect and if I hardware step again so that's our first instruction which was load the accumulator and, and now it's going to actually load you know the the actual address here 2000 it's going to load this information into the accumulator so we do a hardware step and you can see that we've got our next address here 9 so that's 0901 and we've got uh, no data here at the stage it's basically just picking up uh, the address here so hardware step again that's our second that's 02 so that's our second address line it's going to pick up now or a second uh, byte our, it's going to pick up our high byte now we've got an address of 2 Zero, zero, 000 so we can see that it's reading from 2000 that's this at the input switches here and we've got the correct, correct data on the uh, data bus there so now we know that the accumulator here has been loaded with these this binary here okay and if we hardware step again we have address 0903 up here we have data of 2f here now it's correct that's the complement data or complement the accumulator so basically just flipping the bits that's uh, looking good there and then if we execute the next command here in hardware that is 0904 and we've got a 32 that is the store uh, the output to here uh, that is the store command only uh, we've still got the address to pick up yet so we're telling it to output to address 3000 uh, so we will step again that's our next next address is 0905 0905 here and we've got zero on the data that's correct because we're reading the address 3000 at the moment so just the 00 part there and we should get a 30 on the next that's the high byte yes we get a 30 here and now it will actually uh, store that in A so these LEDs should change when we do the hardware step here not quite <laughs> uh, we are at uh, what are we reading here we are reading 3 Zero, zero. so yes it's just uh, reading the address 3000 zero, zero, zero. Uh, and we hardware step they should change now I think yes they do okay all right and that is basically we're at 
four, five, six, seven. Yep, so we're at 0907 here. We've got data of C3, which is our jump back to an address, or basically jump back to start here, because uh, we've got the uh, zero, 0 in the next uh, memory location, and it should be 09, because that's the start of our program, right? 0900. So this is the address here, is 0909, that's where it's picking up uh, this data here, which is 09, and then it should return back to address 0900, 0900, and with the start uh, contents of 3A, which is correct. So that's it for this one. Uh, that's basically uh, lesson four completed there. Uh, and then, you know, lesson five, we've got basic software concepts. I'll go through that. I'm not sure whether that's, uh, you know, worth a video or not. I'll, I'll have a wee read and see what I think about that. Uh, but yeah, that's it basically for the introduction and a quick uh, rundown on the basics of this uh, HP 5036A microprocessor lab. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm having fun with this now and uh, I'm just going to work my way through the manual. So, so yeah, so ke keep an eye out for more videos. It gets uh, more and more complicated as it goes on and we start using the oscilloscope and things like that. So yeah, keep an eye out for more videos and thanks very much for watching.